Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Bun Med where we discuss concise medical knowledge you can fit inside of a bun. Today we will be discussing the disease profile for G6PD deficiency. So let's start by thinking about how we can classify um, hemolytic diseases and here are the following examples which we'll look at in this video. So G6PD deficiency is a metabolism problem condition um, which is described as hereditary, non-immune and intravascular although it does have an extravascular component to it. Now looking at the disease profile, this is an X-linked recessive condition and this means that it's going to be mainly affecting boys and males. Um, the condition has two variants, so there's an African and a Mediterranean variant and looking at the pathophysiology of the condition we can see that it's all to do with this lack of G6PD enzyme. Now, G6PD enzyme is important because it's required to reduce glutathione, and glutathione can only work if it's in its reduced state. So what does glutathione do? Well, this is an important antioxidant which prevents our body from feeling oxidative stress, and so this will not result in damage. So we have a situation where glutathione cannot be reduced, Therefore, it can't protect us from that oxidative stress, and so it results in free radical damage. And this can cause the red blood cells to uh, become destroyed and split apart. Now, in terms of the symptoms, um, most patients are generally asymptomatic. However, there are certain triggers we need to look out for. And when these triggers do occur, the patients may develop anemia, um, again, neonatal jaundice is also a possibility, and also other things like gallstones as well. Now, the triggers are usually something that do come up in exams, and so it's important to know about a couple of them. The first one are infections, and this is because they can drive that free radical production up. And so um, bacterial infections like pneumonia or viral infections like hepatitis are the key ones to look out for. There are also certain drugs that can trigger um, G6PD deficiencies problems. And these include Dapsone, which can be used for dermatitis hepatiformis, um, sulf drugs like sulfonamides, and also antibiotics such as ciprofloxacin. And so this may help to influence which antibiotic choice you're using. There are also certain foods, such as broad beans, uh, that can increase oxidative stress, and also, um, interestingly, henna as well. Now, in terms of the investigations, um, again, we're going to be looking at doing our full blood count and reticulocyte count, which will point towards a hemolytic disease. On a blood film, we'll see a couple of interesting things. And on the slide, you can see on the left-hand side, we have a red blood cell with a Heinz body. Now, Heinz bodies are something uh, seen on a, a film for uh, G6PD deficiency, and essentially what happens is that in the body, these Heinz bodies are seen as abnormal, and so what will happen is in the spleen, we have macrophages that will take a bite out of the red blood cell where the Heinz body is. And so you also get, uh, as shown on the right-hand side, a bite cell. So in summary, for the blood film for G6PD deficiency, you will see Heinz bodies, bite cells, and also there's a blister cell as well. Again, the LDH will be high, haptoglobin will be low, and we can do more diagnostic investigations, such as a G6PD enzyme assay, which will look at the levels of G6PD, and also genetic testing as well. Now, when it comes to the management, if the patient is asymptomatic, we may not need to do very much. However, it's still important to explain to them which um, foods to avoid, for example, or which medications they need to avoid in order for their triggers to not occur. We may also need to give them transfusions if they're anemic, and also folic acid, again, um, it is known to be helpful. If the patient has a large amount of extravascular hemolysis, we may consider doing a splenectomy, and again, we would need to manage the complications of this, such as infection through antibiotics if needed. So that's everything for today. Um, thank you for watching the video, and feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, it would massively help us if you could like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.